has been battling pimples since he was 12. Like many teenagers, this 17-year-old has tried every kind of treatment. From skin washes to drugs, nothing seemed to work. But on a four-month exchange trip to the south of Italy, a miracle occurred. The diet was completely different, pretty much no dairy and a lot of meat, a lot of pasta and a lot of wine. I was just, I guess, dumbfounded to find out that when I was over there, my acne cleared up. RMIT researchers believe diet plays a major role in triggering acne and in partnership with the Royal Melbourne Hospital, have begun a world first trial to prove it. Well, there's good evidence from hunter-gatherer societies who eat non-Western foods, totally natural foods, that there's no acne at all. In fact, many of those societies don't have a word for acne. Dietitians say foods high in refined carbohydrates, such as white bread, baked products, and even potatoes boost insulin levels, which in turn can elevate hormone levels and cause acne. Diet plays a role in hormones, and then you have the hormone effect affecting the oiliness and acne and inducing perhaps at a particular age like the adolescent age where this is more susceptible. While the study could change the lives of thousands of teenagers, it's also good news for chocolate lovers. It might have fat in it, it might have sugar in it, but it doesn't raise the insulin levels as fast as some other types of foods. The university is now seeking male volunteers aged between 16 and 25 to take part in the study. Louise Pennell, 7 News. Regional nightclubs will introduce early morning curfews from August 1st in a bid to tackle street crime. All late night venues in Ballarat and several in Warrnambool will refuse entry to patrons after 2am. The lockout will be monitored by a Melbourne task force set up in response to concerns from residents near Chapel Street, Paran. But the government says a city curfew is not yet on the cards. I'm doubtful as to whether it has any application here in Melbourne, but we'll, we'll look at it. The curfews will be trialled for six months. New Shadow Treasurer Mark Latham wants to stop the boom and bust cycle in Australia's housing market. Mr Latham says if housing was more affordable, interest rates would be even lower. Mark Latham is Labor's big gun. Now shadowing Peter Costello, he's trying to land a blow. Last week he suggested that scrapping negative gearing could smooth out the housing cycle, an idea quickly rejected by his leader. Now he believes the government needs a new department for urban planning, pointing to what he sees as Mr Costello's policy failure. He's just the spectator uh, talking about it, but unable to do anything about smoothing out the housing cycle, and uh, that's one of the reasons we didn't get an interest rate cut last week. The shadow treasurer unable to answer how he'd tackle the problem. It can't be done overnight. You've got to have the urban policies in place for the medium term. That's how you do it. Australia last had a federal urban planning department under Mr Latham's mentor, Gough Whitlam. I mean, he wants to take us back to the future, the Whitlam years, except that it would be without the charm and without the intellect. In Canberra, Michelle Ainsworth, 7 News. A family pet has been hailed a hero after saving the life of a missing toddler. For 17 hours, the dog kept his little master warm as the overnight temperatures plummeted. Zach was back in the arms of his mum this afternoon after wandering off yesterday at 4.30 with his constant companion, Bear, a four-month-old German shepherd. I was just worried about the cold and him not having anything to eat and drink and he's scared of the dark, so that's my big concern. An hour after Zach disappeared, the police helicopter was called in and a full-scale land search started. Concerns for Zach's safety increased as temperatures in the area plummeted to zero degrees. At first light, mounted police were called in as the hunt was stepped up. Then at 10 o'clock, Zach was spotted from the helicopter sitting in a paddock. The major is in, in such good condition for the exposure and the temperatures that he's been through. And being with his best friend could well have been the difference between life and death. Zach's pet bear didn't leave his side the whole night, cuddling up to him when the temperature dropped. The family now say they've formed a bond which will never be broken. One thing for certain, we're not getting rid of bear, so no one can have him. Emma Cox, 7 News. A knitting boom is spreading across Melbourne. Hundreds of women are now taking up the pastime and putting a new spin on the centuries-old craft. They're called Chicks with Sticks and they're popping up at some unlikely venues all over Melbourne. We knit anywhere, in cafes or pubs or with bands, whatever. It's like yoga, but you can do it in the pub with a beer. It's fantastic. Thousands of women taking fashion into their own hands, picking up the needles in a massive knitting revival. 
but it's less about getting it right than just getting together for a knit and a chat. Knitting's much more productive than talking to boys, I reckon. With your wool, plunk it in your bag, go off with your friends, you can knit sort of watching television, you can watch talking to people. Even Cameron Diaz and Madonna are doing it. Harry Potter and Julia Roberts are excited about it. But most believe the resurgence is more than a celebrity-led fad. It's technology overload and people need to get back to what's inside themselves and get in touch with their own creativity. Today's knit and pearl is a far cry from the days of grandma's homemade scarves, with thick needles and unusual wools bringing the art into its own. And it all means good business, with yarn sales skyrocketing. We were going to the wool shops and they're all sold out of wool and apparently there's a worldwide shortage of brown wool because brown jumpers are really fashionable this year. And it seems knitting's here to stay with children as young as six keen to learn the old craft. I think that if everyone in the world knitted, it'd be a much calmer place. Monica Lepore, Seven News. We'll have to start knitting. I'll definitely take it up now. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Thank Jen. You. Plenty of sport yarns after the break too. Coming up, Brad McGee off to a winning start in the Tour de France. Serena Williams defends her Wimbledon crown and the Cats cause the upset of the season. Tonight's Sport Report, brought to you by Energex. Hello everyone, more heartbreak for Carlton this afternoon, squandering a 32-point lead to lose to Melbourne at Optus Oval. Only a day after club, club legend Vin Waite passed away, his son Jared had inspired the Blues but was left shattered after the Demons kicked six last quarter goals to win by seven points. Jared Waite paying tribute to his late father, donning the famous navy blue Guernsey, which Vin had worn with such pride. Melbourne wearing black armbands as a mark of respect, flowers also left on the Blues bench. Waite's teammates united behind him, debutant Laurie Anglin scoring a goal with his first kiss. The veterans also inspired Corey McKernan booting four goals in the opening turn. Melbourne playing in patches, Robinson and Neitz keeping them in touch. But they were under pressure, Carlton clutching to a 10-point lead at half-time. Emotions spilling over shortly after the break as Jared Waite ran into goal. It was Waite! What an emotional game of football it is for him. The Demons unable to break the deadlock. Carlton inspired as Kuda Fides turned back the clock. The home side 26 points up at the final change. Danaher calling for something special and they delivered. The Demons now first to the footy. Wrestling the ascendancy away from Carlton. The last kick of the day sealing a stirring seven point victory. Beautiful looking kick. Greatest kick to go. Although everyone's thoughts were still with Jared Waite. I just think it's a remarkable effort for a, for a 19 year old. Um, the way he carried himself, the maturity, um, his approach today. Um, you see a lot of things in football and uh, his courage um, and determination to do what he did today under extreme difficulties is something I've, uh, I've never seen before. Steve with the land. And a thriller too at Geelong with the Cats causing one of the season's biggest upsets, beating Port Adelaide at Skilled Stadium. Geelong's Ben Graham, the match winner, his goal in the dying seconds giving the home side a memorable one-point win. A split decision in terms of the fist, Scarlett getting the upper hand, Treadray hitting back via the scoreboard. This is a big bomb, he's kicked a goal! In blustery conditions, the skill level in the air was something to be marvelled. What a grab, Hardwick! But the Cats kicked the final three of the first term. Wanganeen was moved to the influential outlet in a promoter's dream. Scarlett stamping his mark as the best backman in the comp. Geelong pinching a break. Pickett keeping the visitors in touch at the main change. Another good performance from the Cats into the breeze in the third term saw the score remain status quo, with Geelong staring the upset of the season in the face. Bomber Thompson calling for a final term of desperation. Ling giving the home side what seemed to be an unassailable lead. Straight to Ling, go! But the power came charging home and deep into time on, they hit the lead for the first time since the opening quarter. Go! The, power! the Cats, though, refusing to lie down. Ben Graham with a 60-metre sealer.
Chris Jones, 7 News. To the SCG now, where the Sydney Swans have entrenched their place in the final eight with victory over the West Coast Eagles this afternoon. The Eagles came charging home in the final term, kicking four goals to two, but fell just eight points short. Michael O'Loughlin, the star for the Swans, booting six goals in a best on ground performance. To the AFL ladder after round 14 and Port Adelaide's on top, West Coast, Brisbane and Adelaide make up the top four, while Sydney, Fremantle, Collingwood and the Kangaroos round out the eight. A busy week ahead for the Tribunal, St Kilda's Stephen Baker faces a kicking charge, the Kangaroos' Brent Harvey will front for striking. And there were four reports from the Hawks-Bulldogs game, all for wrestling. Essendon's Matthew Lloyd still heads the goal-kicking table with 51, three clear of Demon, David Neitz. And in the VFL today, wins to Tasmania, Geelong, Box Hill, Bendigo and Port Melbourne. To tennis now and world number one Serena Williams has again upstaged older sister Venus by claiming a second consecutive Wimbledon crown. Venus won the opening set but hip and stomach injuries took a toll. Serena fighting back to win her sixth Grand Slam title. Struggling with a stomach strain and heavily strapped thigh, Venus said the only reason she contested the final was to end rumours her matches with Serena were fixed. The injuries didn't hamper her in the first set but it caught coverage good. The unforced errors continued for Serena Venus taking the first set 6-4, but the younger Williams struck back quickly in the second. Oh, what great court coverage. In charge at the net and the baseline, Serena levelling, taking the set 6-4. Unbelievable. Venus's injuries began to catch up with her in the third. She left the court for treatment and appeared to stress when she returned. Serena quickly wrapping up the deciding set and the match. But there wasn't any jubilation, playing her wounded sister a difficult task. It was a little more difficult uh, seeing as Venus that's injured, but I just had to tell myself just to look at the ball and nothing else. <laughs> but for Venus, the moment was still worth capturing on film. And Max Murney and Mahesh Bapati took the first set off Todd Woodbridge and Jonas Bjorkman in the doubles final. Oh yes, beautiful hands. Woodbridge equal to the task in the second as they leveled the match. They took the third, but only after a hard-fought tiebreaker. <laughs> wow. Woodbridge's record equaling eighth men's doubles crown secured in four sets. And another title is within reach tonight when he contests the mixed doubles final. Paul Gregg, 7 News. Melbourne Storm has moved into the final eight after a shock victory over the Canberra Raiders this afternoon. Two late tries for the Storm, sealing the 18 points to eight victory. Matt Geyer wasted no time getting down to business, snaring the first for the Storm ten minutes in. Gives it back to Matt Geyer, who scores under the post. And while Canberra showed some hope of a fight back in front of the home crowd, they were unable to crack the Storm's attack. It comes back to Malala, who has nobody in front of him. A spectacular start to the Tour de France with Australia's Bradley McGee claiming the leader's yellow jersey after the opening time trial. Four-time champion Lance Armstrong was seventh fastest. Man, I'm in the zone. Everything just comes naturally. In Formula One, Williams' Ralph Schumacher has claimed pole position for the French Grand Prix. Joining him on the front row of the grid, teammate Juan Pablo Montoya, Ferrari's Michael Schumacher and McLaren's Kimi Raikkonen are next, Australia's Mark Webber qualifying ninth. Tiger Woods has taken a six-stroke lead over Aussie Robert Allenby at the Western Open in Illinois. He shot a third round seven under 65 to finish the day at 18 under. Allenby is tied with American Cliff Kresk at 12 under. And our swimmers have left for a training camp in Germany ahead of the World Championships in Barcelona later this month. Michael Sinclair, 7 News. And good luck to the scud. Absolutely, we'll be watching. Thank you, Craig. Up next, all the weather details for the working week. A lovely winter weekend in all. Today there were plenty of bursts of sunshine about. Melbourne reached a top of 16.7 degrees at 5 past 2 this afternoon after an overnight low of 9.8 at 5 past 7 this morning. From the satellite map, the cold front near South Australia will move into Victoria tonight, bringing showers tomorrow. And if you're travelling interstate tomorrow, fine in Canberra and Sydney. Brisbane, mostly fine and a top of 22 degrees. Darwin, fine and 33. 
Early morning showers in Perth clearing to a fine day there and Adelaide and Hobart also showers. Around the state tomorrow fine overnight except for patchy rain developing in the southwest. A little further rain extending to remaining southern and mountain areas. Melbourne's forecast fine tonight, mostly cloudy tomorrow with a little rain developing later on in the day. An overnight low of 11 degrees, a top tomorrow of 15 degrees. And looking further ahead, Tuesday a shower 2 and 13 degrees. Fine on Wednesday and 14. A little warmer Thursday and showers developing next weekend. And that's 7 News this Sunday. Thanks for your company. On Sunrise tomorrow, 101 tips to save you money. But we leave you now with a look at this year's Army Reservists March through Melbourne. Enjoy your evening. Good night. How did you go with tonight's lucky tattoo numbers? They've just been drawn under government supervision, and here they are. Hopefully they were lucky for you.